So uh, here's a question, uh, the first question on the uh, final exam. Uh, that's pretty cool, right? I mean, you already know it, and it's three months from that final exam. All right, so when do you need a database? Isn't that the first question you would probably be asked at a database interview? And uh, is it when you have a lot of data, ad hoc queries, concurrent transactions? Uh, well, the common misconception is that when you have a lot of data, you need a database. But uh, that's not necessarily so. It depends what you want to do with this data. And that's what database system or database management system will provide you with. So it is not just lots of data. It's more ad hoc queries. In other words, queries which are not predictable. Queries which can be asked uh, uh, by a user because he is suddenly interested in some sort of information, which is not hard coded in the a, in a interface. So you may you may want to, to find out uh, in our bar beer drinker database, you know how many, uh, you know many bars uh, given drinker frequency uh, bars which serve beers that, that drinker likes. I mean that's an ad hoc query, not predicted before. Concurrent transactions. Uh, do you touch the same data, update the same data concurrently from different sources by different transactions? So that's uh, that's. Uh, uh, functionality which uh, is provided by database management system. Uh, you probably heard about asset properties, atomicity, consistency, isolation, durability, locking, two-phase locking. I mean, these are all these uh, features which database management system provides, uh, which may or may not be needed in your situation. If they need it, you need a database management system. But if you just have a lot of data, I mean, you can just store it in a file and right uh, programs to deal with it the way you want it. So the right question is uh, two or three. Okay, so as we clear that, the first question on the on the database interview, let's just go and, and start with our uh, mini review of what, what the situation is currently in a, in a database industry, in a database field. So we facing uh, some sort of a, a radical change uh, over the last 10 years. And that change has been uh, basically walking away from uh, purely relational databases and just using relational databases, which were ruling the, uh, the landscape of uh, database systems for many, many years, uh, you know, decades. Uh, now we have a sort of relative newcomer on the market, uh, which is uh, called no SQL databases, uh, or not just SQL databases. And uh, in addition to relational, some people talk about polyglot databases. That is different systems, uh, key value stores, document stores, column databases, you know, uh, uh, graph databases. Uh, so it's much more confusing in one way. On the other hand, it provides more choice. Let's say 15 years ago, 10 years ago, uh, there was only uh, the question of a vendor of relational database which you would choose or whether you would use uh, uh, open source uh, MySQL. Now today, it's, there's much more choice. And I'll explain where this choice is coming from. So to continue uh, on that vein, uh, uh, database field is undergoing dramatic transformation. Uh, kind of expanding from just a relational database point of view. And, uh, you know, the way we used to teach uh, databases for years and years is no longer uh, useful. Uh, it's not the case uh, uh, that we can just repeat the same lectures uh, over and over again, like many, many of us did, uh, teaching SQL and relational algebra and functional dependencies and normal forms. Uh, many of those concepts did not survive, uh, uh, you know, did not survive uh, uh, the, the decades of practice and proved not to be so useful in many other state. Uh, so uh, let, let us go back now to uh, just uh, the beginning uh, to relational databases and then put uh, no SQL databases in the, in the context. So why? Uh, 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 well, uh, why change, you know, like what started? 
all of this? Well, uh, it has been 50 years, exactly 50 years, since a seminal paper by Edgar Code was published, a Relational Model of Data, in 1970. It used to be the Bible of databases for 30 plus years, and uh, it's unquestionably one, one of the most, if not the most influential paper in computer science. It created uh, basically a trillion dollar industry, I think, if you just combine all these years and uh, ruled uh, the field for, uh, for you know, over 30 years, but not anymore. So here's the paper. That's uh, in the ACM Digital Library. The, uh, uh, the title of the paper is a little arcane, you know, a relational model of data for large shared data banks. Uh, well, data banks, nobody, nobody uses this term anymore. But aside from this, I mean, the paper is surprisingly contemporary. And a lot of, raises a lot of fantastic original issues which influence databases till, till today. By the way, uh, uh, I don't mean at all that the relational databases are passé. I mean that they now have to share the place on the top with uh, several other newcomers, that's it. But you still have to know relational databases and we will spend quite a bit of time talking about relational databases and SQL in this class. So here's an abstract of the paper uh, and uh, it, it contains, even in the abstract itself, this uh, idea which has uh, uh, it's one of the key ideas uh, behind uh, relational databases and a key differentiator between uh, what was before 1970 and after, which is uh, data independence. Essentially, uh, uh, look at the first sentence, future users of large data banks must be protected from having to know how the data is organized in the machine. In other words, uh, uh, Applications should not be affected by how the data is implemented, how the data is stored, where the data is stored. Users at terminals of most applications should remain unaffected when internal representation of data is changed. Uh, that's, uh, that's a really uh, attractive proposition that application programmer uh, is, does not have to change his program or her program uh, when data is uh, reallocated or redistributed. I mean, that makes total sense. I mean, it seems like a nightmare if you had to change your code every time the database was reorganized. So that's what Cot postulated and called it the data, data independence principle. Now here is a continuation of the abstract and uh, uh, again, uh, just a summary of the paper and you will see later how all of those uh, Little paragraphs are really prophetic. I mean, for example, in section two, certain operations on relations are discussed. I mean, that's that's amazing to me. Certain operations. Well, that's where he defines join. That's where he defines projection. That uh, he lays <coughs> down the principles of SQL. I mean, all happening in one paper. So these were the commandments of relational databases because. In a way, uh, it was a very principled, it's a very principled field, you know. There are certain uh, features which make a relational database a, re a relational database. I mean, it's aside from the relational model and data organization. And according to Code, these this com uh, this commandments, which he was guarding uh, relentlessly for many, many years, are database independence, data independence, which I already mentioned, data normalization, uh, which is around even now people talk about normalized tables and denormalized table denormalization normalization whatever it is uh, it is there in the language of databases today uh, essentially it means that not every set of tables is a correct design database design is uh, is uh, very much a, a topic of 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 Cod's paper and uh, even today, even in NoSQL databases, uh, people look at the tables and, and can tell you, uh, you, look, your organization of data is not correct. These tables are not right. They are either uh, need to be normalized, uh, and we'll discuss it at length. Uh, they need to be decomposed, uh, split, or combined. I mean, uh, not every table, not every set of tables is a correct database. So that's that's, he was the first one to say it, and that stayed for a long time, till now. 
data centric programming languages. This was another one uh, which came with relational databases rather than just using uh, regular so called procedural languages like uh, C, C, Java, uh, Python. Uh, Relational databases pioneered the concept of purely data oriented query language and such a query language is SQL. It only was designed for us to operate on data and perform set oriented uh, massive set data operations as opposed to um, regular programming languages. Uh, there are some terms used uh, like programmer productivity. SQL is a very crisp, very concise programming language which allows to express even complicated queries uh, in a very simple way, sometimes in a couple of lines of code. Uh, this is not uh, the case, um, and I will compare it when you write a program to, to do it. Uh, very often the program is 10 times longer, but uh, people care less and less about it uh, with time, and uh, performance is one of the main uh, reasons why uh, 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 programming productivity is being a little bit uh, reduced the requirement about productivity or uh, short concise programs is sacrificed at expense of uh, higher performance programs. Uh, finally, uh, one of the most important terms, declarative, not procedural. SQL is a declarative language. It tells you what to do the machine, but not how to do it. And as opposed to procedural uh, languages such as uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, all languages, you know, so uh, that's a difference. But these commandments are seriously questioned today. And uh, there is one word for it, no SQL, not only SQL. Now, as every revolution, when it's about 10 years ago, uh, this has started to be pushed in context of the web data and high performance requirements by Google and Amazon, which decided to drop SQL and came up with their own kind of a uh, way of dealing with really massive amounts of data, which they have, they pushed uh, an, uh, a new uh, concept, which later you will, you, will, you will hear about the history of this name, weird name. Uh, it was a hashtag actually of a working group uh, uh, in 2005, I think, which, uh, which coined the term. And uh, it's no longer as radical as it used to be now. No SQL uh, databases have again uh, kind of came back to uh, to relational databases a lot and uh, realized that a lot of concepts uh, are not that bad. So they, they renamed it now as not only SQL, not not just no SQL. But history goes in circles. Uh, uh, Mr. Codd or Dr. Codd in his landmark paper. Uh, criticized pre-1970s databases for lack of clear query languages, data independence, and denormalized data. Well, that's precisely what NoSQL databases are. So uh, he could, uh, his paper is very much, would be very much in place now. And in 2020, uh, looking back at uh, the last 15 years, just as it was in 1970, looking back at uh, earlier models. So uh, it's a classical example, when you say, uh, of back to the future. So what's new? What's new in NoSQL databases? Well, uh, requirements, uh, high performance web demands. I mean, you want 200 milliseconds uh, time for execution of the query and in addition to it for, uh, you know, transmission of the results and the total time, uh, which is uh, for a very large, uh, you know, gigabytes, millions and millions of records and possibly thousands of uh, queries per second if not hundreds, you know, hundreds, thousands queries per second, SQL simply could not serve this kind of performance. Also, that's debatable too, because there are some defenders of SQL uh, saying that parallelization would, would, would help, but uh, the, the opponents of this view and proponents of no SQL were, were saying, well, uh, leave it up to the programmer. The programmer can do uh, uh, better jobs than a machine, which is, uh, which is optimizing SQL queries and performing uh, suboptimally compared to a, to, a, to a competent programmer. So uh, in addition, data is complex. Uh, it's a semi-structured data, uh, it's a lot of text. That's not what uh, relational databases are good at. They're good at structured data. No SQL databases are uh, 
dealing with all kinds of data. So that's probably more fundamental than just a performance requirement. Uh, so a lot of you during the class asked me to restate what's the difference between SQL and NoSQL databases and what is the, uh, when would I use a NoSQL database versus SQL database? And that's, uh, I, I guess that question came up with, uh, uh, when I announced that this is also gonna be one of the questions on the final exam. That's a second question on the final exam. So uh, uh, I will give you a data set and I will ask you, are you gonna use no SQL database or SQL database? But you know, it's too early to answer this question because we will uh, have to first to introduce uh, both concepts and we'll come back to this. So uh, if I told you now, uh, it, it would you would not have necessary pre prerequisites or knowledge to, to really appreciate this difference, you know. So let's wait. I mean, I, I promise to make it very clear, and we can we will go over many many examples when when clearly you would use a relational database, and many examples when you know no SQL need for no SQL is more clear. But just to summarize uh, uh, the the no SQL uh, philosophy or, or the crowd, uh, which is behind uh, uh, no SQL applications, uh, is well. Here it goes. I mean, forget about SQL in web applications, uh, uh, which, uh, which are uh, characterized by high, high performance, high demand for massive number of queries per second. So, and no need of ad hoc queries. I mean, if you go to your user of Amazon database, you clearly are not allowed to ask any query you want. I mean, you, you are uh, limited by the front end, which is defined by, by uh, Amazon engineers. So, uh, no need for ad hoc uh, queries. Uh, nobody in the, any web application, <laughs> really, I know, is going to be uh, allowed to ask a, ad hoc queries unless you are a developer working for this company. So internally, nobody cares that much about programmer productivity because we have a new generation of programmers, uh, like you guys go, will be, or some of you already are, who, uh, as I say, write programs as quickly as they write emails and they write back free programs almost as quickly. I've, I've seen programmers like this. So they're very productive and they prefer to write a code which they understand every single uh, line as opposed to rely on SQL query optimizer or a piece of software which, uh, which supports SQL uh, in database management system. These are, uh, these are people who prefer to, uh, uh, to, to write uh, they code sort of a full stack manner, you know, in other words, from implementation, allocation of data to the application. So uh, code, not code, is a king. And I came up with this uh, rather obvious and a little, uh, and, and a little funny uh, uh, wordplay that, uh, that coding is the king now and uh, Coding was not the king during code's time. I mean, everybody wanted to make coding uh, go away and it be replaced by maybe in a natural language. I mean, there were people who were saying, well, everybody should be able to code. Well, uh, the direction has been opposite, uh, clearly. Uh, coding is back in a big way and no SQL is pure coding, and both on physical layer and uh, managing clusters, indexing, uh, hashing along. With logic, so you know uh, there is no secrets. Uh, there is no uh, software uh, which uh, no SQL programmer will shy away from, as opposed to SQL programmer. So uh, the principle of data independence, which Code has uh, so uh, uh, vocally uh, proposed and defended, I mean, it's pretty much gone in no SQL databases. Well, so. Uh, Enough about NoSQL databases. I probably I don't want to confuse you here. I just wanted to mention that uh, elephant in the room, which uh, which is uh, we, we're going to address that elephant uh, in this class in the second half of the course. But now to SQL. So uh, have you ever seen an SQL query? Well, I guess many. Of, I'm sure many of you did. Uh, so that's an example. Uh, you know, as any as any piece of code uh, probably looks very strange uh, to you and uh, rather complex, but uh, soon it will be very clear what it is, you know. And uh, visually SQL code character is characterized by the presence of these keywords like select, from, where, exist, join. And uh, you know immediately 
that that's SQL code, even uh, it, it could be different variants of SQL. You know, you know it could be a, a MySQL uh, or it could be Oracle SQL or it could be a, a SQL Server. Uh, there, these are small differences, but they all similar in the sense that core language is the same. So, so that query uh, is about bar beer drinker database, which we will discuss uh, in the next couple of slides. This is going to be our running example. It's, it's very good to have a simple running example so we can all uh, understand and remember the so-called schema. So uh, in a couple of lectures, you will very clearly write queries like this and be able to understand uh, when you faced with a query. By the way, the meaning of this query is here below. So here we go, SQL programmer. I'm just uh, now acting a little bit like a salesman of SQL. SQL programmer does not have to know how data is stored, whether it is stored on a cluster, whether it's stored on a single machine, uh, whether it is implemented as a you know a hash table or in the form of the index, whether the index exists or it doesn't exist. SQL programmer doesn't care. He writes the query, she writes the query, and you, you can only see uh, whether it uh, maybe need some help in terms of creating indexes and helping out uh, when you observe the performance of the query. But the query will run, I mean, without you understanding anything about the underlying uh, database. So that's that's the beauty of it. And why the query will run is because SQL is declarative. So in other words, it doesn't bother with telling the machine how to evaluate it. Machine knows because uh, the uh, database management system, relational database management system is running there, interpreting SQL query or compiling it to the execution plan, optimizing that plan and executing that query on the data. So uh, SQL execution engine takes over the details of uh, of the SQ, uh, otherwise uh, SQL programmer would have to be familiar with. It just isolates the programmer from those details. It uh, takes over. It's like a assistant to the programmer. So, uh, do you know SQL? Uh, obviously, you you don't yet, but some of you probably are familiar with with it a little bit. So. Uh, here is number three question from my final exam and uh, from database interview, which I uh, did a lot in my life for different positions, industry or in the uh, for for just a project uh, where I was hiring students for those projects. So uh, they, you know, data is organized in a relational database in the form of uh, tables, and that table is students taking classes. So find all students who do not take databases. That's my query, which uh, which I uh, which I usually ask uh, someone who says, "Well, I know SQL. Okay, well, come on and and tell me what how to write a SQL query for this." And believe it or not, uh, even though the query is just one simple sentence, uh, a vast uh, not a vast I'm not, I'm saying vast majority, but a lot of people get it wrong. And a lot of those who claim that they they know SQL, so um, uh, I'm not happy about it. But you know, I'm not completely unhappy about it because I often faced uh, you know very cocky uh, kind of SQL programmer saying, well, you know, I've been I've been doing SQL for the last four years. You know, okay, great. Well, write this query. And uh, uh, the mistake they make, by the way, is uh, and for those of you who just knew a little bit of SQL, is that they try to select uh, all those tuples from this table with class not equal to databases. Well, that's that's not going to do the job, and uh, I will discuss uh, in, in a short while why. Uh, more is needed. It's a query which requires uh, negation, and uh, therefore it's, uh, uh, it's necessary to First, calculate all students who take databases and then subtract them from the list of all students. That's, uh, you know, knowing a little bit of logic helps too here, you know, just to understand it. So that's uh, one little tricky query. You know, I always like to find uh, a very simple test which would tell me very quickly whether uh, there is a problem or not, uh, rather than just torture people with a very long tasks, you know. Sometimes a very simple task would already expose that you, you got to learn more. So that's that's my my mother of all queries, so to speak. 
So how would how do we teach SQL? Uh, obviously not by uh, through PowerPoints or textbooks or manuals. There are plenty of manuals, uh, very very good ones. I mean, one from Worldwide Web Consortium, W3C uh, SQL is my favorite. Uh, it's interactive. I'll post it on on the on the website on Sakai. But uh, the way you teach SQL is by doing, by writing queries against a real database. So I believe uh, uh, today, which is uh, September 2nd, that's when, when I'm recording it, um, uh, you know, uh, you will see the database, you will see the access to the database, and we will give you a recommendation for my, my SQL query browser. So you can practice on the database and it will give you practice uh, queries. Now. Uh, by the way, the reason I'm recording it, uh, this is recorded at home, not in class. Uh, this is not a recorded Zoom session because I ha I'm still waiting for uh, recording from Zoom. Apparently, uh, yesterday's class uh, was was recorded, but uh, I'm told uh, uh, it takes now seven to two hours uh, for Zoom to pro process those. So I'm not quite sure yet whether this is going to work, you know. But uh, uh, so just in case, I, I'm recording this again. So you guys have something to start with. So, uh, so a relational data model. So what is data model, first of all? Well, it's a mathematical representation of data, you know, uh, that's uh, uh, different data models have different representations. Graphs, for example, I mean, there were a lot of data models based on graphs. Uh, that's not what a relational model is. A relational model is based on relations. These are mathematical concepts. But if you want to use more informal term on tables. Uh, so uh, uh, everything is a relation in a relational database model and uh, queries are operations on those relations. Algebraic operations. In fact, something called relational algebra allows a transformation of tables into another table through operations which are very much like Boolean algebra operations, but with a couple of additions. So a relation is a table, and the table has the following components, and it's important to remember them. These are attributes. So that's a relation uh, which stores uh, beers and manufacturers of those beers, and it has uh, two attributes, name and manufacturer. And these are in the first columns, right? So that's the first row usually when you see the schema. This doesn't change often. This does, you know, this is something called database instance. So these are tuples. There are two tuples here about two beers and uh, two manufacturers. And there is a relation name, beers. So that constitutes a table. Relation name, names of attributes, and tuples. Now, this is very important. What are the schemas? Uh, well, relational schema is one of the most important concepts. Uh, that's uh, what you start with. That's a relation name and attribute list. So for example, beers, name, manufacturer, beers, name, string, manufacturer, with types, string, not numerical. This is an example of a schema. That's a declaration of the relation. That's uh, that's uh, uh, similar to uh, regular programming languages when you declare all variables here in relational database, you have to declare your tables. So database is a collection of relations. And why relations? I mean, that's a, again the genius of this uh, original paper by Cod. Uh, well, because they model very well the, uh, the way the data, uh, we, we think about the data. Uh, remember from introduction to uh, discrete structures 205, which is a prerequisite to this class uh, where we talked about, uh, or they talked, whoever was teaching it, about predicate calculus and, and relations correspond to predicates, you know, and predicate calculus corresponds actually to uh, SQL. Code uh, proposed relational calculus. Uh, and a lot of logicians felt offended because they said, well, wait a minute, Mr. Cott proposed a new language which we have known for 100 years called predicate calculus. And that's uh, true. Uh, that only adds to how natural this model is. And people have been doing this serious philosophers long before computers, you know. So uh, that's 
give relational models this kind of historical uh, uh, historical context and historical backing. It is natural. In addition to this, it is an abstract model which underlines SQL, uh, the most important uh, query language. So, uh, so it's important to understand the relational basics of this. And here we are. We are at the point of defining our running example. And uh, you will remember that example uh, because we'll use it many times in the class. And this is also our practice database schema. So you will see it very soon on the cloud, on the digital ocean uh, uh, shared account where you can run your queries against this database. So this database is about bars, beers, and drinkers. It's a classical database. Jeff Ullman uh, from Stanford, uh, one of the most important figures in databases, who wrote uh, very, very important textbooks also, has uh, uh, proposed it. And since then, a lot of people have used it. The, the reason why we are using it is that it's a very easy to remember and uh, also very easy to form very complex queries against it, right? So uh, it's about beers, bars, and drinkers. So each of those have a little table, not very interesting table, but nevertheless, just stores information about beers' names, uh, bars' names, drinkers' names. That's all kind of like a repository. Uh, this is sometimes called an entity table. It's only about single entity. What is underlined here are the keys. This is something which identifies every single tuple, very important, uh, sometimes called primary key. Uh, and uh, again, uh, we'll, we'll get to that, but I just wanted to mention this. So these three tables are uh, not really storing any, any critical information in this database. I mean, they are necessary, but the real meat is in these three tables. And you can see that they, each table involves two entities from this here, so there's all combinations are represented. So relationship between drinker and beer is in the table likes. The relationship between uh, bar and beer, bar selling the beer at a specific price is here in this table. And the relationship between drinker and bar is in the frequency table. So uh, believe it or not, having this six, we can form an absolute beast in terms of uh, queries. And uh, you know, uh, you will see very soon that we can practice essentially every element of SQL and every and demonstrate power of SQL using just this very, very simple example. So take your time and uh, familiarize yourself with it. Uh, but uh, you will because you will run queries against it. Well, SQL is not only the query language. Uh, SQL also has a component called data definition which allows you to create a database schema. And by the way, this is what you do first. I mean, there is no, uh, you cannot query a database which doesn't exist. So you need to create tables using uh, uh, this data definition component of SQL. And these are the first statements you will use uh, when you build your own database. You will not have to use them in our example uh, because we have created this database for you and you don't have uh, you know, administrative credentials to add tables to the, to this database. Uh, later in your project, uh, you know, you you will be you will be creating tables as well, so you you can build your database ground up. So here, how it looks like. Uh, uh, that's a, a simple statement to create a table. Uh, create table. You give a name of the table and you give a list of elements, which is attribute value. Pairs, essentially what you say is what is the type of each attribute, very similar to a programming language. You just, uh, you know, put a name of the attribute and you say, is it numerical or is it a, a string of characters uh, w w which is declared as var char and the length of it, you know, so the longer fields have more elements. And so you create a table. Uh, if you delete the table, you want to delete a table a lot because uh, not often, it's not frequently happening. Schema changes are usually much less frequent than instance changes. Uh, so you drop the table uh, uh, and that table is no longer there. So uh, uh, this is like the beginning uh, if you want to start up and build a database. So that's what you need to do first. So these are elements of table declarations. I mean, most. Uh, Basic element is attribute and its type. 
So the most common types are integer, integer real, character, uh, you know, var variable character links. That's I use all the time uh, when you know that there is a certain limit of the number of characters in the in the field, but uh, but it, it can be less, you know, it doesn't have to be fixed length. So, so these are the types, you know, just just the, the same way as we use it in in programming languages. So this is an example of creating a table. Uh, that's a table from our schema, which we presented earlier. Create table cells. So we create a table with uh, three attributes: bar, beer, and price. And each of those attributes has the different type. I mean. Uh, real price is real uh, number uh, has fractions uh, the beer is uh, length of 20 but it could be less and the bar is uh, 20 characters uh, long so uh, uh, so that's a, a, a that's an example of what you do and after uh, executing the statement this table exists and is ready to be populated by the way this is a good time to mention the difference between schema and instance that's yet another candidate question on the final exam. <laughs> I mean, I've given you four. I mean, boy, I'm going to specify the whole exam. Uh, so everybody will get an A, I guess that's the point. But uh, believe it or not, even if I specify the whole exam, there are still people who are not going to, uh, who are not going to listen to me or, or read it. So uh, it has to be repeated a couple of times. But, uh, but anyway, uh, uh, when you create this table, you're ready to populate it. And when you populate it, it, you create a database instance. An instance of the database is very different than the schema. And that's a very common question. What's the difference between uh, database schema and database instance? So database schema is this, is a plan of the database, is something which doesn't change often. You know, This is the structure of the table. The instance is a content of the table and the instance changes. So when I say database instance, I mean something which changes a lot, which is very large. When I say uh, uh, most of the time, at least very large. When I say uh, database schema, uh, I mean usually a much shorter uh, piece of data or sometimes called metadata, right? Metadata. Remember, a lot of people talk about it. What is your metadata? Well, it's going to be part of it. It's going to be the database schema. So metadata just uh, uh, changes uh, not often and uh, organizes the, the instance in, in, the, in the correct way. So remember, instance, larger, frequently changing. Uh, schema, smaller, not changing that often. Schema is a plan for the instance. So I think... Uh, this is probably it for this uh, sequence of slides. So thank you very much. And let's see what Zoom provides us, if any. Uh, but at least you have this for now.